first run of recruiting that you just you didn't really recruiting never ends. Yep. The cycle finished up, I yep. should say. How do you feel like obviously the results look pretty good, how do you feel like you were able to learn the skill and then go out and apply it? You know, I think anything anytime you're passionate about what you're representing and, and what the message you're trying to get across. I wouldn't call it easy, but it comes naturally, I think. So I'm very passionate about Ohio State. I'm a firm believer in uh, our system and how I go about teaching wide receiver play. And uh, it's been fairly easy uh, communicating that. So yes, it's, it's, it's the interesting part is more you know, developing the room and uh, and putting pieces in and kind of it's like a it's like a puzzle you know you kind of you want guys that do different things that bring different traits and, and really identifying those traits and finding those traits uh, has been the most fun. Well, Kings, we're gonna I, as I recall, you were the leading receiver the last time Ohio State played Washington. Uh, yeah, good chance. I think it was at their place. At their place. Yeah. When you when you think about the fact these teams have never played the most, I'm curious is that the fact that it finally is going to happen. Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, again, Ohio State, the rich history that we have. For whatever reason, we either played in other bowl games or haven't been in the Rose Bowl as much. I know I never played in one. Uh, so I'm uh, really excited, really uh, blessed, and really humbled uh, by the experience. Good deal. Thanks, Thanks. When you see like a veteran, the veteran group that you had, how does that kind of, in your first year, kind of make you mold into what you want your wide receiver room to be, especially heading into a group next year? That, I mean, it's going to look a little different, but I mean, it's going to be, you're not going to have those three fifth years guys. Yeah, I would say uh, it's very really important for me to use them as a template. You know, I think, again, I can only do that if they were the right template, and they are. So, uh, you know, a lot of my examples, a lot of my clips that I've saved, a lot of the technique things that they've been doing, uh, for good and for bad, you know, they've been used uh, for the young guys. So, but again, the most important part of any group is if your best players are your hardest workers, and they work. So, understanding that can't change uh, was the most important part. And when you see kind of the state of the wide receiver group moving forward, how strong could it be, especially when this Rose Bowl game is over, when you have guys coming in that could or are expected to make a major impact, especially in the 2019? Yeah, I think anybody that comes to Ohio State uh, expects to make an impact. I think you don't come to Ohio State to not play. Uh, again, we will uh, attack it. However, it sees fit, you know, when the group kind of starts molding itself. And each year, the group is different, and uh, it takes on its own personality. So uh, that'll start developing uh, early in 2019. What you mentioned the guys setting those templates, but what you know, what did they bring this year specifically that made you a job easier? I would say uh, the biggest part would be you know, their demeanor, their maturity. Uh, you know, their approach and practice. I mean, that's right there. You know, you're going to practice 10 times more than you're ever going to play games. So uh, just understanding and illustrating the expectations day in and day out uh, from a, a collegiate athlete, especially at Ohio State, and then them doing it the right way. And then, and then by them doing it the right way, uh, the fruits of your labor showing up on Saturday and how that and how that all works together and how that ties together was the most important aspect. Have you seen the young guys start to kind of pick up on on those things and, and apply them themselves? Absolutely. Just again, those guys uh, uh, setting the standard, uh, both how to operate off the field, uh, what kind of person you are, but then also the operation when you get in between the lines and what the expectations are of you uh, when that happens. We talked to KJ yesterday and he said you know, he'll make his decision about what to do afterwards, but as a guy who has, has been through this process before and whatnot, what is kind of your advice to him? How do you anticipate conversations going between you two? You know, I think anytime you're in a situation where you have a choice, uh, you're in a blessed situation. So uh, there are people that kill to be in his position, and I think that you know, again, my job is to give as much information to him and data to him as possible and really then uh, help him make a decision. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily influence by one way or the other. I will give him my opinion on what I think he should do. Uh, but in the end, I am here to support him uh, through this decision and many future decisions as he, uh, you know, navigates the world of life. And with the way you guys rotate through, the guys don't get maybe as many reps as they would at, at other schools. Does he need 
do you think he's ready, I guess, to, to take that step, or could another year be beneficial given he'll be one, you know, more of the guy? You know, we'll talk about that more after the game. Uh, really outline a plan. If he, if he decides to forego or if he decides to come back, the plans will be different, you know. But in the end, uh, to make it very clear, and these guys know, like, you know, we're going to have an environment where you're coming back in the offseason and I'm still training you when you're gone. And this is a relationship that's going to last uh, the test of time. So uh, this is a decision, uh, not the decision, and he's going to have a lot more decisions to be made that hopefully I can help him with down the road. Specifically that H-back spot, yep. the future of it, what do you see there? It's obviously been a big part with Urban Meyer's yep. success here, but with Ryan Day taking over, and how do you see that position kind of evolving? I think it'll be a huge part, and I think that uh, that's not going to change. You know, I think, uh, you know, again, we have a system to where uh, you know, whether it be X isolations backside or we work inside out from the front side with the H's and the Z's, and, and we have a we have a complex system to where um, we can really focus on either one of the three guys or four guys. So um, obviously, the H position, the, the slot position, will maintain a big part of our offense for years to come. And when you look personnel-wise, Demario, I know Jalen Gill has been a guy that's names come up a couple times. Who are the guys that they kind of seem to be the next guys there? You know, C.J. Saunders has done a yeah. phenomenal job. Uh, I'm excited to see what he can do next year with some opportunity. Uh, Demario McCall is doing a great job. We'll see which role he kind of plays as the offense takes shape. And, uh, and Jay Gill has been making st uh, strides over the last week or so. So um, a lot of the, all the guys need to have a big offseason. And uh, there will absolutely be a, a big competition. And uh, hopefully KJ will be the one you know, leading the way through next year.